here. Okay, now you can hear me. Yes, everyone can hear me. Good. All right. Oh my God, I have to let people in. Sorry. Um, my the, the people that clean our house were here today, getting everything ready for Amon, who's going to be here tomorrow, and the office. I had them clean the office, and then it's dangerous because we have a whole studio up here, and then sometimes, you know, that stuff. Anyway, so. They unplugged my microphone. There is Miss Sarah. I didn't even talk to Sarah yet. So, hi, Sarah. Hello. How was your um, anniversary dinner? It was good. Did you it get was... all the food that I told oh, you? Oh, we ordered all the food. Val, I have no idea how you and I ate as much as we did because Dan and I had so many leftovers. She went to Dai Tin Fun. And so for you guys in LA, if you haven't been to Dai Tin Fun, it's amazing. Uh, it used to be only out in Arcadia. So you had to go schlep out to Arcadia and Arcadia is a very heavy Chinese community. And so they have amazing restaurants. And so it's this soup dumpling place that's just delish. And now they're like, you know, they're everywhere. And so I tell you're getting one in New York. What? Shut the yes. door. The, the manager we there um, told us that he's actually transferring. He was the manager of uh, the Costa Mesa one that you and I went to. Uh. And, um, he got moved to Century City and he is being moved to um, the New York location going in Times Square. I said you'd be very excited. Uh, I will. I will be very excited. But I have to say, like, the great thing about New York is there's great Chinese food here. Like, there's great dim sum. Like, so good here in New York. You know, um, that was one thing when I was in L.A. I really missed was good Chinese food. Um, the best Indian food besides India is in London. Uh, if you guys have never been to Gunpowder, that's a really freaking good restaurant. Um, and I will be going there again when I'm there. And I will be there, you guys, um, uh, for the, the February 11th and around that time. And so we will definitely be having a party for all you UK people at my hotel, just like we did last year. February 12th, we'll probably be at the Hyatt House uh, on Whitechapel Road. Um, and uh, we'll have a little get together for all y'all um, at uh, on Sunday night, February 12th. Put it in your calendar. Um, and because uh, I like to see everyone. That's how I found out Deanie was tall. See, because like <laughs> you, I get to know you guys and then you meet someone and you're like, oh, my God, you're a giant. What? I didn't know you were so tall. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird getting to know people all this way. Um, so we're excited about the event. Uh, we're getting all ready for the event, and that's very exciting. I have some notes for a few people today. Uh, is David Rankin here? No, I think he's working. Okay, is Fran Mary here? Fran, or is Fran here? No. Okay, I want to talk to her. Uh, Abrek, you need a mic. You need a mic, okay? You can take off your mic right now. Um, so okay. you guys, this is for everyone. If you guys don't have a mic for auditioning, um, I think it's helpful if you do. I mean, I have like super nice, like lav mic that I'll have on the next, um, you know, three days at the event, like Friday, Saturday and Sunday, but you don't need to expend that. You can spend one, you can find one under a hundred bucks on Amazon that, is good that pairs with your phone if that's what you're using. But I really noticed that um, uh, one of our other clients sent me a pitch video and uh, Lorena 
And when she was, when she was, is, I don't even know if she's here. She's probably not, but um, uh, oh, I'm trying to move it with my phone. Um, when I really noticed that when she, uh, because she's a scientist in real life, like a real fucking scientist. And so she does like slides of that in her pitch video that she's going to send off. And when she did the voiceover compared to when she was talking in her pitch, it was all, it made all the difference in the world. So you like, if you're going to, and I'm not talking about Sunday's pitch, but like, if you're going to shoot a pitch and edit it with some clips in it, you know, and make it super fancy, which I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You really need to make sure that your sound is the same. So the way that you can do that is use the same mic in the same location on your body, right? Okay. So I yeah. have a clip mic. Okay, good. Then wear it. Yeah, I have a wear it. Mic. Yeah, wear it. Your pitch was great. I mean, you're really getting it. I just think now it's like you got this new suit and now you need to wear it. You know what I mean by that? Like, yeah, yeah the more you say who you are and what you're selling, the more you believe it, right? And so- yeah. Um, really, um, yeah, and good job. And for all you guys that I was watching some of your videos and you were using the camera, I love that because that keeps it alive and exciting. And so good job with that, Abrick. You did that. And you can even go, you know, you can give me a little, um, you know, what's his face that was married to Madonna, Guy Ritchie. Like you can give me a little Guy Ritchie kind of, Spike Lee, you know, they all mess with distances and okay. things like that, which I think are really interesting. And I think that could be really great for you. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank Good. You. Thank you. Um, great job. I saw, I watched Bernadette's and Jenna's. I mean, we talked to them yesterday. So let's talk to a few people that haven't been up yet. Does anyone want to show me that has not shown me once? Camilla, I saw your hand. Come on. Hi. Um, hi. I haven't had the time to record mine yet, but I have. Uh, okay. Now, remember, you guys are doing these live, right? <clears throat> On Sunday, you're doing them live. And then if you want to record them and send them out to everyone else, please do. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, I'm Camilla Roman. I am the headstrong offbeat femme fatale. My most recent roles were a Nordic noir investigator and my serious regular Russian deadpan classical musician, one of my many comedic characters. I'm a cross between Tilda Swinton and Susan Sarandon. I'm a trained yoga and Pilates instructor with years of experience, and I'm also a decent tango dancer. I'm bilingual Norwegian and English and have lived in both LA and London. I'm also fluent in Swedish. I live in Oslo, Norway, but I'm more than ready to enter the international scene. Okay, great. A couple of the shows that you've been in, people know those shows internationally. Yeah. So yeah. I, I I think you should say those. All right, because they are very like small co-stars though. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I want to say something about that mm. for everyone. You guys, so, like it doesn't matter about the size of the role, but like, what I'm getting from you, Camila, at this point is not the pro. It's it's not quite standing into the pro that I know you are. So I just want you to push yourself to, and maybe it's about starting with your credits. Even if that's not the way you ultimately do it, I feel like, you know, like, yo, bitch, I've been in this, this, and this, and I did this, and I won this award, and I did, because you've done a lot. And so I need you to kind of accept that a little bit, like that cockiness that I know you have and mm -hmm. start there with it. All right. And then go into the Pilates and all the other stuff. But I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. All right. But the uh, the awards that I have are all like for filmmaking. Does that? Again, it doesn't matter. All so right. you should identify as a you know, actress, director, producer, right? Or whatever roles you've had. And, mm -hmm. and um, so check this out. If you haven't the strength to impose your own terms, then you must accept the terms life offers you. T.S. Eliot said that, mm -hmm. right? And I, that's on my desk. And I, and I feel like, like you, you have to step into 
this next level that you want to be. Yeah. And, and it's, um, it's a different outfit, you know, like it's one that you haven't really worn. And, you know, it's interesting because like with actors in general and women on top of that, I mean, you had enough of America to know this. I don't know, like, you know, it's not as true where you live, but uh, at all probably, but you know, it, it's like, we have this, we, we have this need to be demure and, and undervalue ourselves um and not say a, a lot more like that in Norway <laughs> okay okay so I don't know because yeah. I don't I'm not I've never been yeah. that like <laughs> I, more, yeah. I I have to say that like you know as you know I taught for 13 years and my Norwegian students were always the most fucking talented and you know Gilbert was my husband also uh, loves Norwegian girls <laughs> just saying okay and so like he'd be always like oh how is so and so you know <laughs> um okay so um um I just feel like it's about you um you know stealing a little bit from the cocking of us cockiness of our movie star friend Manuel yeah right right like remember how like you punched him that one time because he was so fucking so Manuel <laughs> punched a movie star y'all should know That's that the secret <laughs> Um, he wasn't a movie star yet, but he is now. Um, and so, um, you know how he was always so fucking cocky because you wanted to punch him? Well, that's what you need to find in you right now, because that's where that is. It's yours. You've busted your ass for it all these years. You've done all these things. And now you want to step into what is the new girl. So I just feel like just do that. Right. And, and so dare to suck. And if you want to send it to me, please send it to me. Like if you go, okay, here's me being super brave and saying, you know what? My name is Camilla Rowland. I've done this show, this show, this show. I currently live in Norway. I'm ready to take it to the next level in my career. I've worked both in London and LA. I have these awards. I have these skill sets. Like, what does it mean to be that chick? Yeah. Right. That says, and I'm ready to work with you. I hope we can, um, uh, I love the way that Dini, for you guys that haven't watched Dini's uh, pitch, go watch it. The way she ends it is really spectacular. And I don't want you to necessarily end your pitch the same way she does, but I'm just saying like, you know, hey, let's let's get together, right? Yeah. She says like for a coffee or a beer or whatever, like the way she hmm. says it. So I feel like, yeah, that could like, because it could be just about you getting on a Zoom meeting with yeah. someone. I, because it is really about that. It's about you beginning to build relationships with people. Yeah. I'm looking down at you. I always have to remember. I have to look <laughs> yeah. um, where you are on my screen. Uh, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, you're going to be like here um, mm. on the big TVs that I have here. Mm. Uh, I know it's crazy. But, but uh, um, can I ask you what, you, what did you think of the headstrong offbeat femme fatale? I think that's exactly who you are. I mean... I think that you have a quirk about you and I don't like the word quirky, but if anyone has it, you definitely have it. You have a, a, like a flat note inside of you that is very super sexy because it makes you who you are, right? It's what is separates you from everyone else. And the way I can describe it is it's like, Da, you know, like it's a little bit da, like a flat note. Does that make sense to you? It does because I taught you acting. I'm sure it does make sense to you. But it's, you know, something there, Camilla, is like that's that, and there might be a better word for it. So, I mean, definitely peculiar. Um, I mean, you have an awkward about you that is really just a gem. So that, I feel like that is something that, you know, like Fleabag, like you have that. I think that's your million dollars. I think that's what makes you interesting. <laughs> yeah, she's like also Phoebe Waller-Bridge is like my biggest idol because <laughs> I want to do what she does. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, good, good. And I just want to remind you all 
that uh, this is like a little selling of actors fast track, but we, one thing that happened, and I just want to tell you this because this is a really good lesson in manifestation. Two years ago, I said to myself that actors fast track, I wanted to get into producing. So I went and talked to, I have a lot of famous producer friends. And so I went and talked to them and I said, what do I need to do? And they started telling me all this stuff. And I was like, (laughs) <laughs> I don't want to do that. And then all of a sudden I have this amazing Jesse who works for us and is our content creator who's producing on the front of deadline and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, so just sometimes things don't show up the way that we think they're going to show up. Right. Right. And so now I have all these people that are clients of ours that are majorly producing and or already have severally t- several times produced right? And are putting themselves in films and all of those things. And those things are way more possible to you than ever before. But then also uh, understanding the other side of it, like how do you get people to see it, right? Which is the most important thing. And how do you get paid? Yeah. Right. I'm working on three projects that I have in development that are TV shows and, and movies. Yeah, and I told you about my client, right, Chloe? I I introduced you guys, didn't I? Yeah, briefly, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she works, you know, for the Defense Department in America, Mm. right, for Norway. And so that's like her main thing. But she's an amazing writer and such a go-getter. And I just think you two are a a good match. But anyway, we'll talk more about that. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, yeah, I mean... I think there's a better word in your brand too. So one of the things that I would write down for myself and for all of you guys, write down the things that you want to accomplish out of the three days. I'm going to, I know I already said it, but I'm going to say it again. You know, be really clear about what you want to accomplish. Valerie, can I make a note before we move on to the next person? Yes. Okay. Um, Guys, when you are coming to the Game Changer on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and most of you that I see on here have tickets, please make sure that your first and last name is listed as your Zoom name or you will not get let in. We um, we have people that say iPhone or iPad. We don't know who that is, and we only want the actors that Hey, just tickets or, or, yes, and are supposed to be taking part of this event to be let in. And also, that is how we are determining what breakout rooms you go into for when you're working on your pitch with the coaches or when you're going into the pitch rooms on Sunday. So it's very important that you have your first or and last name listed, or you won't be let into the event. So just get used to doing it. If you don't know how to do it, where, wherever your picture is, there's these three dots. You can change your um, name. It, I think it says rename um, and make sure you have your first and last name. Just a little note, because I get very nervous when I see someone doesn't have a name and they want to be let into one of our meetings because we just don't know who that is. Yeah. But yeah, Jay, that's the name we have you listed as. So you don't have to, yes, leave that. Jay Samuels. Okay. That was it. Just ask as well, how do we change our picture on here? Does anyone know or can they write it in the chat? Because I can't find it. It's in your um, Zoom settings. I have no, I I had to Google it. I am not, (laughs) you have to log into Zoom in your Zoom account and add your picture there. You can't do it once you're in a meeting, if that helps. (laughs) Who knew? Okay, Bernice Pike, come on down. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's good to see you. It's lovely to see you again. Um, yeah, I'm good, thank you. I've had a little work on writing out my pitch. I haven't okay. been properly practiced it yet, but I can give it a crack. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Bernice Pike, the English rose who sometimes comes in a crumpled package. I play that unpredictable, flawed heroine who will charm your heart, then disarm your own psyche, and gallop off into the sunset, leaving you ghosted and confused. (laughs) I play upstairs and downstairs, have a gap in my teeth. The orthodontist told my mum, if it's good enough for Madonna, it's good enough for her. 
I'm based in London. I have a base in Cardiff and I recently worked with the legendary Stephen Burkhoff and had leading roles in other feature and short films. I sing and I dance and I'm here for my next leading actress role in film and TV. Let's chat. Bravo! That was awesome! The only note I'm going to give you is like after that whole little fucking thing you just did about your brand, it needs a little bit of a laugh and you need to act it a little bit more. Yeah, I need to commit more. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you need to act. Um, yeah. Because, like, I mean, the ghosted thing on the horseback, that was fucking hilarious. Okay. So I, I really got that. Like, it's a modern day, like, you know, that's why you're perfect for like, Bridgerton because they're modern day like fuck off you know <laughs> like it's like the modern day woman in old right like with the and and I love that about it you know and so yeah it's perfect I wouldn't change anything oh thank you yeah, yeah I love it I love it and um so I you on my one because I did uh, a little video the other day just when we were doing the challenge on I'm playing the game of yeah. and um in that, I did have a line after I say about being ghosted and confused. I did have a little, we've all been there sort of line. Um, so I don't know if it needs that or if it's just better to keep it punchy, how I did it just then. I don't think you need to add anything. I mean, I'm not missing anything and I really got who you were and okay, you uh, seem like someone I would want to put in my movie because you have a a light spirit and you seem to be super smart and um I need someone plucky plucky is a good word for you okay it's a very good word for you thank you like you you've got a pluck about you so like you've done a lot of Shakespeare right so that again have you done a lot of Shakespeare yeah 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 I've done yeah. I've done Shakespeare. you are like yeah. a walking pants character I mean my god you're like the you're so perfect for so many, so many roles. I could see that you would do really well. You know, I remember this is a funny story. Uh, I was, I used to go before I was union equity, the theater union in America. I would go and stand in line for a Broadway call all day long on the chance that they might see non-union people at the end of the day. That's what I used to do. Right. And I was standing in line for Lie of the Mind, the OG production of Lie of the Mind that ended up starring Amanda Plummer. It was amazing. I saw it. Anyway, I was standing in line to get seen for that, which I did not get seen. But anyway, I was standing in line and this girl was looking over my shoulder like, you know, you're in line all day and you get to know the people in line with you. And we're on a New York City street. And she's looking at me. She goes, you have too much Shakespeare. Bitch. What do you know about Sam Shepard? You're standing in a Sam Shepard line. He is a modern day Shakespeare. He writes lyrically. Like, what's your problem? Like, you are stupid, right? I, I just can't. Anyway, that would make that made me upset. I remember I was so upset about that. I was like, so I did a lot of Shakespeare too. I did a, a ton of Shakespeare. I played Phoebe three times, Audrey once. And I think I played. Once. Oh no, but I've played. Um, no, sorry, Phoebe in. Um, Oh my God, Merchant of Venice, but are you talking? Oh, no, Phoebe and As You Like It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then last thing, because a few, when I put up that video the other day, I happened, it was just off the cuff at the moment. I just made a reference to my lampshade, but then loads of- well, Oh yeah, I loved of, that. That was <laughs> I, hilarious. Do it in front of your back? Yes, it's perfect. It, okay. The lampshade was perfect. Fine, I'll throw perfect. that back in. Nice. Great. Oh, you thank you, Pam. Awesome. Yeah, you should be a big star, man. I mean, really. Oh, stop. Keep going. Whatever you just keep going. Don't stop. No, I'm I'm on it. Thank you. All but right. Val, I'm learning so much from you and I'm so glad our paths have crossed. Yeah, me too. All right. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Hello, Joy. Button. Okay, I found the right button. Okay. Um, hi. Hi. Okay. I have a question. I want to do my pitch for you, but something came up previously and now I have a question about it. Are stage names important? Like, how do you know if you need a stage name? Oh, um, no, they're not important. And, um, uh, you know, you, if you have an issue with your name or feel like you need to rename yourself or whatever, then, then do that. If someone else has your name on SAG and 
I mean, on IMDb Pro, there's like 500 other Joy Scotts, you know, yeah. that you might want to add a middle initial before you go and change your name. It's a pain in the ass. I did have a client do it. I've had a couple of clients do it over the years, right? Okay. Um, one of them had a very like, Sarah Smith, you know, like really like even like Asian name. And she changed it. She changed her name to Aaliyah. Right. And she did the whole thing. She went through everything. And, you know, I always say like, if you want to, I can always make a connection for you. If you want to talk to someone who's been through it and what the ups and what they would tell you, you know, if you don't have a lot of credits and you want to change your name, that's fine. Change your name, but it's a lot of effort. Okay. I have no credits and I have a couple stage names options picked out, but I literally have not even had enough hope of making this a career to be that, have that a consideration before like right now. Okay. Joy. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, thank you for saying what you just said. Okay. And here's what I, I, I want to say to you. As my daddy used to say, shit or get off the pot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm sure you might know you, that sounds like a, you know some a character you would at least play would say something like that. And so, um, you know, I think that you need to decide. Like, do I want to do this, right? Um, you know, and listen, there are different levels that you can do th- this at, right? Like, say you go, you know what? I just want to get some professional experience, bring maybe a little money in the door. So I can show myself that I can make money. Maybe I'm just going to go build a commercial career right now. Or, um, you know, like whatever you think you can do um, or you consider there's a lot of different things you could do. You know, I have a client, Zai, who hopefully will be here this weekend. And she, um, you know, she went out and built a social media following on TikTok. And then she just got signed by one of the number one agents in London. But she just focused on that. So sometimes it's good to focus on one thing. But this sort of in-between thing of like, I don't know if I could really do this. So you decide that you can do this. I know that I can. I like getting a little deep. I, I was born knowing I was going to be an actress. I have known it since I was 18 months old and I have spent the last 35 years doing it all wrong and f- just dancing around it and trying to get the second job to pay for life and da, 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 and getting distracted. And then, no, I'm going to come back and, da, 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 and now I need an agent. Ooh. Okay. So what if it wasn't all wrong? What if it was all to lead you to this moment now or to lead you to a different moment? Like you go, Oh, I see that I needed to learn that because here's the thing. I mean, I just want to be, this is, yes, this is, can be deep, but like, we're not going to get there. You guys, if we don't go deep in general, because you guys have been fucking brainwashed. Okay. About, about what you can do or what you should do or how you should proceed in the business of acting. I'm trying to undo all of that and say, Look at it like a business. No one ever says that to you. And really, what does that mean? Right? Because there's a, there's people can say, oh, it's all that show business, but they don't really tell you what the fucking that means. Right? And so it's not that you did it wrong. Like, how did you not, no one told you. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) Don't 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 beat up on yourself. Like if this is your dream, there is a there is a way. All I'm saying is that I know there is a way that you can have what you want, especially right now, because we are in a seller's market. That means, you guys, like when I sold my house in 2018 in Los Angeles, California, I did good because we were in a seller's market. That means that I put my house on the market the next day I had an offer right? We as actors are in a seller's market. So that means that there is more work than there's ever been. You just have to go get it. Here's the deal. Please be clear about this. 
the way that we've been taught to get us is to get it is what's fucking us up. Because the way you were taught to get it is to get an agent. I know I say this a lot, but you guys listen. I have been talking to thousands of actors for the last 25 years, and my message is razor clear now and laser clear about what I have to say to you. So we wait like zombies for the agent who's going to rescue us. And we're like, no, Valerie, I have to get an agent. I've got to get an agent. And then and the numbers are in. Out of 100% of successful people, 10% do it that way. 90% of about uh, do it do it the way I'm telling you, which is a million different ways, right? But the number one action has to be looking for acting work. So what you guys do, typical of being kept down on the farm, is you go look for this little dog scrap acting work on Actors No Access. You submit yourself all day on those casting workshops and think you're doing something about your acting career. That's, you're like down here at the scraps of the table. Go up and sell yourself to the people that are going to pay you to act. If they don't need your product today, they will eventually if it's defined, right? Now, if I was to go through here and go, who will they choose the product of first? Uh, all the brown skinned men and women right now, they're in a heightened seller's market. Like Abrick, you should be working all the time. Jamie, you and I already have had this discussion. You should be working all the time, right? Like the males, I mean, my God, right? Like it's your time. So go get it, right? Just go get the work right? The problem is the system itself is what has been crumbling. So it's not that I don't want you to respect this, this, the, the system, like, you know, all of these 90% of successful actors that I've worked with out of them, 70 to 80% of them have eventually gotten the big agent or manager, right? But the, what the problem is, is they, when I found them, they were waiting to find this person. Right. That's all they were doing. So I had to get them functioning in a different way of being a business. OK, I'm just going to keep saying that, Joy, because you got to do this now. Like if this is what you want and you've done all this stuff and you feel like it was a waste, which I don't think it was. It was just you being able to go, oh, I did that. So what about that didn't work? Everything. <laughs> but the, the more you can get specific, the better. <laughs> um, honestly I think for, for a lot of it was my personal mindset because I would go into an audition or go talk to an agent and be like well I'm not going to get this anyway I'm too bad I'm too ugly I'm not I'm too old I'm not old enough whatever 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 um so I think I wait you covered up your mute yeah. I'm okay. muted yeah no now you're not it was just covered oh. up I probably have my hand on the mic. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I think really, I was just talking to the wrong people. Yeah. Is a big, big thing. Yeah. It's really sometimes as simple as that. Like you go, usually the thing that's going to make you the most money and the thing that is like you said yesterday, well, I'm just me. Then mm -hmm. it's like the, that is the thing that makes you all the money. But often we're like, oh, I'm out here looking for it. I'm out here looking for it. And it's all the time. It's been here in front of your face. Right. And you're like, Dum. you know, and so, uh, you know, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. And so you already have everything you need, you know. OK. All right. Let me move on. Yes. Thank you. You oh. are so welcome. Did you want to see my pitch? Uh, I one? saw it. Do it on the okay. thing again. All right. OK. All right. Callum. 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 <laughs> Hello, Valerie. Hello. Would you like me to present to you my pitch? I would love for you to present to me my pitch. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Hello, I'm Callum Bagshaw. I'm that lovable loser who you wouldn't usually hang around with. Little do you realize he has a very dark agenda. 
I have often played those sinewy, psychotic characters. My lead credits include Jean-Paul Marat in Marat Sard, Herman Graham in The Lives Are Left Behind. Uh, I've come from a theatre background, ready to gear myself into more screen acting. I see myself playing the master in Doctor Who, Tangerine in Bullet Train, and Dr. Robotnik in Sonic the Hedgehog. I... Oh, don't worry, those were just the voices in my head. Anyway, I uh, hope you get in touch. I hope you enjoyed what you see. Uh, I'm excited to show you what I could do for your future projects. Have a lovely rest of your day. I don't think that's so weird, the voices in my head. I don't think you should do that. No? Right. I, I'd cut that. Okay. Um, what would you suggest I, I replace you, that with? Uh, okay, this is what I'm going to say to you. I'm not crazy about the camera angle. Are you going to put your camera up and are you going to light yourself a little? Uh, uh, yeah, I've got a yeah. little light. Okay, so thing. here's the thing. I can, I know if I was there with you right now as a fellow, as an acting teacher, that you have a lot of tension in your shoulders. So I want you to really, uh, if you can do the pitch standing up, I would like you to do it standing up. Okay. And even if you go close, that's fine. And you do move, that's fine. But I, I want you in your body. Right. Right. Okay. Because it was a little bit in your head. So I want you to let it go now and let it be like a little bit more grounded in your gut. Um, okay. So when you do come close to, and you turn your head, which was a lovely angle and I liked it, I've got to, you've got to fully believe what you're saying in that moment. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you don't need the voices in the head thing, um, but it's good. It's good. I just feel like there's a, it's kind of like what I was saying to Camilla a little bit. It's like, the belief for you needs to sink in more. Um, and I know it's there because I coached you a little. And so I know it's there. So just keep keying into that. But it's good. I mean, you've come a long way. So good. Good job. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Tori. Also, just want to oh, say, yeah. love yes. the hair. Love the so, hair. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Toreen, come on down. Hi. Hi. <laughs> been a long time I know I know okay you want to do your pitch well I was going to say um first that I was a bit confused with the descriptions you know the adjectives that you wanted friends to describe me as an actor I felt yeah. that they were describing me as a person rather than how they would see me as an that's actor right. sometimes that's the way you find yourself into it I mean because as Joy said yesterday on this she said oh the thing I'm selling is me. And that's what I heard, you know, that she's like, oh, it's that simple. And so I, I do think there's some of the stuff that your friends and family were saying about you that applies to what you're selling. Um, and you're coming to the game changer. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we're going to do an adjective game, which is always everyone's favorite. You're going to go into a room with like five actors. We're going to go around the table and you guys are going to lob adjectives at each other, right? And then we're going to come back. And so you're going to come away from this event with a really solid group of like, oh. And so when we begin to lob adjectives at the event, you guys, we want to think about them as, um, so let's do, let me do something with you, Toreen. Okay, I'm going to just do something for you. I'm going to pin you. Okay, now, so Torian, I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions and then I want people to log, lob uh, things in the chat or you can come off mute, you can say your thing. And then, so do you have something to write with? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, get something to write with. Okay, great. But first I want you to tell me, what is the role that you knocked out of the park? Like, what was that role that you played where it was amazing? Um. I played a Jamaican tap dancer. Okay, well, tell me about this Jamaican tap dancer. Who was well, she? I was someone that needed to um, just meet some friends and I wanted to have fun and I joined a class, but I wasn't very good. I was a bit of an incompetent dancer. Oh. Did you know you were incompetent? No, I was just having fun. Okay, so you were just having fun even, and you didn't care that you were bad? No. 
Okay. So why do you feel like you knocked that out of the park? Um, I don't know, because as a tap dancer, I feel that I'm pretty good. So it was hard for me to play someone that couldn't tap dance very well. So um, I don't know. I think I gave it authenticity. I don't know. Why? Yeah. Because of the struggle or yeah. the uncomfortableness? So I mean, do you play women that are struggling, do you think? Or um, are trying to do something and can't ever get it done? Sometimes I have, yeah. Okay. Do you think those are people that you could play really well? Like the people that are struggling? Survival? Yeah. Okay. So maybe there's like some kind of struggle, survival, uh, survivalist, uh, determined, but not quite aware. I mean, you definitely have some, like a little bit of that other side of you, which is kind of, um, don't take this the wrong way, but like a little ditzy, <laughs> but not ditzy in a, in a, in a blonde dumb way, but like in a, you know, uh, I would say joyfully naive. Yeah. Oh, joyfully naive. Was I would that say okay? the from Vicar of Dimmons. Yes. Joyfully naive. That's good. Anyone else have words that you want to say to her? The Black Happy. Abyss from Vicar of Dibley. What? Uh, there's a character called Alice in the Vicar of Dibley. She's the Black Alice in the Vicar of Dibley. Okay, great. She wants to look great. that character up. Okay, great. Awesome. And then we have some words here. Honest, deep, friendly, free spirit, um, confusing, unknowing, earnest. Oh, that's good, Elizabeth. I like that. Dizzy, oblivious, funny, black Alice. Oh, that was Jen Goodwin that said that. Okay. Uh, no, stop it. It's all true. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, joyfully naive, earnest, confused, unknowing. Uh, the mouse that uh, fell in the cream bucket and is making it butter. Miss Bates and Emma, sincere, artsy. Yeah, ditzy, but with a heart of gold. Oh, I love that, Anna Maria. Single mother. Yeah, definitely, like, you definitely have an earthiness about you, like, like it might be that person that you think you can get over, but then she has that twinkle in her eye and it was like, she was the magic person all along. Do you guys know what I mean? Like, I feel like that is there for you. Okay. All right, good. Does that help you a little bit with your brand? Very much. Okay, yeah, perfect. Thank yeah. Thanks everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks everyone. That was really good. So we'll do that. We will try to do that as much as we possibly can, you guys. Um, in um, and we will try to do that as much as possible in the game changer. Okay, Violetta, don't be upset with me, but I'm going to skip over to Elizabeth and Bernadette, and then I'll come back if we have time because I, I they haven't been up to the mic. Elizabeth Chapel, come on down. You haven't been up to the mic. Hi. Hi. Where do you live? I live in New York. Oh, yes. where in New York? Uh, Brooklyn in Dittmas Park. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. nice. I was just in Brooklyn this weekend. Mm -hmm. I went to Williamsburg with my husband. He's there now skating. And uh, he's a skater. He's 60 and he's a skater. Yeah, okay. Uh, so he's so we went to this barbecue place and I'm like, oh, let's look on TikTok. We're going to Williamsburg and all the best places to eat are always in Williamsburg, uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> And then you go, oh my God, you guys, do you eat like according to TikTok? Who else does that? I don't know. I do. So. I didn't know that was part of TikTok. I wish I knew. Oh yeah. That's the best part of TikTok. You can tell you, like you can go Brooklyn Eats or William Berg, William Berg's Eats. And then it tells you, you see all the videos and then you're like, oh, let's go to this barbecue place. We had some amazing barbecue. And this is from someone that lived in Chicago and Kansas City, two of the leading places in barbecue. Oh my God. I'm going to have to, because I'm looking for good barbecue in, in New York. Yeah. You got to go there. Feet something. F-E-T-E, like the French. F-E-T-E. Put it in. It's a Williamsburg. Go there. All right. What's your question? What's your thing? 
So I am working on a pitch and it feels like, A, some of the words I say, I'm like, that's too much. Uh, shut up. Um, and <laughs> there is another part of me that's like, this feels like one specific part of my, of the adjectives I got from my friends or a specific part of my personality, but it removes the other. So I'm just going to say what I have so far. Okay. My name is Elizabeth Chapel, aka Biz, and I am a smart, disarming queen who will always arrive late to the UN to solve an international crisis. My recent roles included a satirical, holistic influencer with a cult following who obsessively harassed her ex. My first sad project was opposite Julianne Moore, directed by an Emmy and BAFTA winning director. And far too many of my friends have told me I could lead a cult. I have a BS in neuroscience and a background in dance and medicine. I'm based out of New York and a local hire in Pittsburgh. Let me help you solve your crisis. That is fucking genius. It's really good. I mean, I bought every dime of it and I didn't think it was too much. And so I'm going to tell you this. When you feel like it is too much, it's probably the right thing. Okay. That's what, that's what we know about you. You're really smart. So I'm sure that you know a lot about yourself. Um, so, but I, I say that that's definitely when you think it's too much, that's where you want to go and you could afford to act it up a little bit, like, okay. right. Like I would wear, you know, again, I would say the same thing to you. I would do it standing up. Oh you know? yeah. Well, I'm just, in my okay, good. I'm just letting you know, yeah. because like, you know, a lot of times we forget that. I mean, I used to teach audition and, you know, inevitably I would give all of my classes seen and I'd see their, I'd sit, see them set there the whole fucking time. And I'm like, uh, you cannot be sitting here the whole time and be rehearsing. You have to rehearse on your feet. You have to put it in your body, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's what we have to do. And so, and it, sometimes I just remind people it's me being this audition teacher. Um, so, uh, yeah, good. So stand up, do your thing, okay. be dressed like you feel, um, I used to have a Russian acting teacher in acting school and she would always say, feel it in your sex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so dress like, you know, you're sexy and you know, you're hot, like wear the heels. Okay, Even if you don't it. see them, you have them on. Okay. All right. Um, I freaked out the use of the, cause you, it's the adjective, adjective, gendered noun. And I was like, am I going too far by using the word queen? Like that, I just feel like it's, too much. I don't know. I, I was with you. I believed you. Like, you know, look, this is one minute. That's it. And then you're, if you understand what I'm teaching, it's always moving forward. So one of the things that's really important for you guys to understand is the way that I'm telling you to communicate with your customers right now no one else is telling you to do that. So the great news is you have the upper hand right now if you're mm -hmm. doing this, because this is the way that the rest of the people in business are communicating, i.e. Loom or anything like that. So we have, I mean, we are actors. It only makes sense that we do it with camera. Mm -hmm. So, so this is the way we're moving. So if you guys are doing this now, you're ahead of the curve. And, and I, and I, why do I know that? Because every week a client says to me, oh, this person said, you poor actors should do this. You know, I really loved this pitch or I got an audition, right? It's just like crazy how much it's working. So remember that this is one of many and you can't always like give them like everything, <laughs> you know, like you have the coat and you're like, I sell this and I sell this and I got this and like, no, 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 no right? Like be the thing and, and just get to know them. And so a lot of it is like sales as service. Mm -hmm. So when you're reaching out, you know, it's like you're serving them because they're going to need you to tell their story because you're very clear about what your product is. And they need that product because law and order needs that product. You are walking Chicago med, Elizabeth Chapel. I mean, you fucking should be a series regular. That's what you want right now, right? Absolutely. Okay, that is you. Okay, so you've got that. That's your job now. So just go get it, right? And and when I say that, I say that, I mean that. Like, look, uh, where, where, how did I learn this lesson? I will tell you how I learned this lesson. They were doing the crucible at the roundabout with Justine Bateman. And 
uh, Arthur Miller was going to be involved and Ruth Nelson was going to play Fr Francis Nurse. And she was actually, her career was actually ruined by McCarthy, which is what the play is about, right? right? And it was going to be like the thing to be in. And I went to my agent and I said, I am Mercy Lewis. This is my part. And he said, you don't have the name. So I kept going. I went to the casting director. I got the audition. I got the job. Okay. So it's that, it's like, that's the thing. So yeah. now you need to go get on a Dick Wolf show. Yeah. Because that's, that's your, you can make, what a nice thing to do. It would be so nice to have a job like that. Like Susan Lucci had a job forever, mm -hmm. right? Mariska Hargitay. Look at these people. You can leave anytime you want to. Look at Edie Falco with Sopranos. I mean, what a great role, right? You can go get those roles. Mm -hmm. Have you done a lot of theater in New York? I've done some theater in New York, downtown stuff. A lot of um, physical theater. So I oh. have actually, I've done like basic Boon Raku style puppetry. You know, that's my whole background. Really? Yeah. Like the downtown theater scene? Oh my, no physical theater. I, I, I went to, I, I worked in Poland during communism at Grotowski's theater. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's my whole background. That's why I've done a lot of video games. Okay. You've done the motion capture? Oh yeah. A lot. Yeah. You'd be perfect for that, by the way. Thank you. We'll talk, but, okay. um, but you're awesome. Yeah. yeah just, you're do the thing. Like if you feel like saying queen, fucking say queen. It's because everyone's like, you're, I look like Claire Foy a little bit. Let them think about, like, I had a career in the 90s because of Rosie O'Donnell, yeah. right? So sometimes you get on someone's coattail and you work because of that. I will, I will, if Claire Foy will let me cling to her goddamn coattails, I will hold on with my- I daughter. saw Gillian Anderson's- um, a showcase because we went to the same acting school many years apart I saw her showcase and I was like oh she's gonna be a star hmm. you know so you know I've always been really good at like helping people do what they want to do you know and I know like it's so exciting right now because it's so possible more than I mean you guys when I got out of acting school there were three networks I mean four you know with PBS but like that was it Fox wasn't even around yet so, um, you know, it, there's so many opportunities for you guys now. Please go take them. Okay, last, I'm going to call. Sorry, Violetta. Thank you, Elizabeth. Bernadette, one last one. And then we're going to, I have to go because I have a meeting. Hi, Zoe. Hello. Uh, so I did, uh, I did a practice pitch um, and I kept it under a minute. But I, my question was, should I add my credits to the pitch? I don't know if you saw it or not. I, I did see your pitch. I did watch it this morning. Um, I think I said something. I, I, you know, I feel like it was good. I wanted to see you do it with how you're going to do it. Okay. Was, yeah, I'm going to do a standing up. And the, gla the glasses can be okay if it's lit right. But just, I just feel like, uh, I mean, the glasses are really a part of you. So, um. Yeah, I just want to see it. I want to see it done like it's going to be done. Okay. But I don't need to add anything to it. I'm going to I make that pause so. small, shorter. I didn't feel like you said added it. anything to it. I, I don't think, what did I say? I thought I said something. I don't think it was you. It was probably one of the other coaches because it, it was, was under me. the. It, no, it was me. That was me. Okay. So you said make the silence uh, um, shorter. I wouldn't sit so long in the power of silence. Yes. That's what I said. It was me. I yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. So make that it was what it was like one tiny half beat too long. I loved, yeah. I loved it, but don't overstay your welcome. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That was it. What else did I say? But again, that's it. That's the only note that I got. Okay. That was all I had to say. <laughs> it was good. It was good. I did want to see it well lit and how you were going to do it though i did want oh to yeah you told me to get off book so yeah but i know oh, yeah, it. i do know it. that is me yeah yeah okay so i'll do it i'll do it the way i'm like gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but i'm i'm pretty i go out for the things that are like in my will my wheelhouse but i want to be more specific That's 
What? I said I go out for things that are like in my wheelhouse. So like I just had a callback for a film where I play a nun and no nonsense, none in the classroom, but I have a heart of gold when I'm talking to my kids, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I played a mom who deeply loves her children, but then she ends up killing the person that killed her son. Okay, that's like, are you saying that in the pitch? I don't remember you saying that. Okay. I'm not saying, I'm not saying those things. That's why I was saying, should I add those things? Or I don't think no. I needed it. I would have told you if it needed adding. That's why I'm going through and doing my notes. Cause it's like, you know, that's how they're going to hear it. Okay. Right. So that was it. I didn't have any notes. You were fine. You were good. I just wanted to cut that beat and I wanted you to uh, be off book so I could see what it's like. Now, after I see it fully performed, I might have some notes. When I audition, I don't wear my glasses. So okay, as me as fine. the person, I always wear glasses. But when I'm out doing the thing, I don't wear glasses. Okay, so just a question. Think about how you might be able to, to add those to one or more of your products that you're selling in your business. Because I feel like that gives you a niche a little bit. Um, and it's always good to be as niched as possible because your product's going to sell faster. So uh, the more that like the good glasses or like the light behind, you know, whatever, or, you know, the, their head or whatever it is, sometimes you guys like, um, we like consistency. That's what we pay attention to as humans, right? So like, Right. If you look at like the people you follow on is social media and, and like they always use the same fonts or they use the same outfits or they use the same filters. Right. They give you a consistent feel that draws you into them. So so I think Bernadette, your glasses are really cool. And, and I just think that maybe you should find a way to, to incorporate them more into auditions where even maybe you started and you took your glasses off, who knows? You know, okay. like, like in all your slates, maybe, you know? Oh. Okay. I just, uh, you know, I get nervous just because of the, it's not coded. So the glare. Yeah. I mean, well, that's something to work towards, right? Getting ones that have no glare. Right. Um, asking oh, well. the next time you get a lens to do that. So anyway. All right. Okay, well, all right. I like that. Can I ask a quick cheeky question by any chance? Yeah. Yes, Jenna. Can I ask, should I say a mixed race Charlize? Because you just said about the black thing, or should I just say British Charlize? No, I don't think you need to say oh. that. I mean, I think okay, cool. they are going, they see, if you're lit well, they see your skin okay. tone. And, yeah. then, you know, uh, I, I think sometimes you guys in general, and I have to go, but that that we, we, we want to not worry about what they what their perception is yeah we have to worry about what we're focusing over here and sometimes there's better things left unsaid yeah i've you tagged you anyway. like that's why i don't believe in age things like telling yeah. people their ages because it's like let them tell you how old they they want you to be <laughs> awesome. no yeah absolutely i've tagged you my headshot and thing today anyway so you can have a look okay. see all right you guys i love you i will see you for the last time tomorrow uh, and don't forget that tomorrow night is uh, for you guys that have the VIP tickets and um, that we're having that um, pre-party. It's at 6 p.m. Eastern time on this channel tomorrow night. Okay. See you then. Goodbye. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.